Hello, thanks so much for stopping by. My name is Melissa with 1S, but you can call me Mel. And today I'm going to be sharing with you my rehab and rescue of my silver sword, also known as the Philodendron Histata. I'm going to start off with what I did at the beginning. So when I bought the plant, where I bought it, what I did when I brought it home, and then we're gonna look at what happened, what was the problem, how I, went through that problem and how I solved the issue. And then at the end, I'm going to share with you what the plant looks like today. So there's definitely gonna be more of a timeline in this video. I feel like a lot of people did enjoy my video with my Rifidophora tetrasperma, where I also did a rehab and rescue storytelling. So I'm gonna do the same thing here, but a little bit more detail on, like I said, the timing of everything and hopefully give you more dates. So we are gonna start off with where I bought the plant. So I bought the plant on Facebook Marketplace. I was in conversation with the girl for a few days actually. So I didn't buy it the same day. It was probably, I would say two to three days until she came into town uh, because she had someone living here for me to meet her where I live and buy the plant. So I went to go meet her with the plant and right away she had the plant in a bag, in a cardboard box, and I couldn't really see it. So I was a little worried, but definitely one thing I would recommend is always inspect the plant when you buy it online. So that's what I did. I ended up letting her know that I did want to see the roots or at least inspect the plant a bit to make sure it's okay or if I needed to kind of you know figure out whether or not I was going to still buy it. So I ended up taking it out of the soil. I am going to post a picture on what it looked like and I was not too happy with what I saw. It did have a lot of root rods and I voiced that concern to her and I said to her there's a lot of dead roots and it was a lot of money. I don't really like to mention price here but if you want to know how much I paid for it then just leave a comment. Obviously price changes when you buy it, where you buy it, that kind of stuff. But because of the price I told her that I was unsure whether or not I wanted to purchase it because it just seemed like it wasn't in good condition. So I ended up letting her know that if I buy this plant, this is what I'm going to have to do. And she, she bought the plant in BC and brought it here. So obviously she wanted to make a profit out of this plant or she was selling, I think, three or four of them. So she was able to bring down the price a little bit uh, just because she said, you know, I've been in contact with you. This is the best plant I have. She did show me another plant that she had. It was smaller, but for the same price. So I don't know, it was kind of a weird exchange, but I really did want the plant and I saw that it was struggling and I caved and I did buy the plant. One thing that I should say as a disclaimer is I don't recommend you buying plants that are not healthy. For me, I feel like if I wasn't confident in the fact that I could help this plant, I wouldn't have bought it. But because I've had experience with rehabbing a few plants already, I felt confident that I could do it. Obviously, I was taking a chance because, again, it's not a free plant, right? I am spending money on it. So there could have still been a loss. But anyways, I ended up buying the plant. I did bring it home and right away I went <laughs> in and started cleaning the roots. I started disinfecting the plant and I gave it new soil. It just looked so sad and I was frustrated because I'm like, oh, I hope I can save it. It's kind of part of the process of being a plant mom, right? Just trying to see whether or not you can help the plant out. At that point, I ended up taking off all the dead roots that obviously were rotted and I realized that the root system that was left was very, very small compared to the full plant that I had. It was a mature plant, it's even bigger now, but definitely I was worried that I was gonna lose it based on the size of the root system. Then from there, I repotted it in a smaller pot, gave it some soil, some aeration, so I put perlite, um, soil mix and orchid bark. I ended up putting a little less soil. I'll show a video of that just because I didn't want to 
uh, stress the plant out too much and give it too much water. After that, I ended up putting it in a container and I really just wanted the plant to focus on producing more roots at this point, not so much putting out a new leaf. So I put it in a clear container just to increase the humidity. I monitored the plant. A few days later, it did start showing a successful transition with the environment that I was giving the plant. So the leaves were drooping. I didn't water it right away. And then when I did water it, it did liven up again. Sure enough, I did see a new uh, growth point that pushed out after I did that. So super excited because at that point I'm like, okay, I'm doing something right. It's going to survive. And I was super happy with that. Then um, a few weeks pass, again, I'll put the dates on the screen and I was able to see that the new leaf was healthy. It was being pushed out. At this point, I knew that the plant was happy and was going to survive. I love the leaves of this plant. They're so cool such a beautiful shape and such a great color I'm really really loving it it's probably one of my top plants that I do have in my collection so far it's pushed out I want to say three leaves in my care it's almost like a leaf a month right now especially because it's spring it's definitely pushing out leaf after leaf after leaf which is awesome but uh, yeah I'm just really excited to see what happens I will probably give it something to grow right now she just has a little bamboo stick but I think I'm gonna have to figure out what I'm going to do when I do a pot the plant needless to say I know I'm talking a lot about the plant but I am gonna go get it and I'm gonna show you what it looks like today all right, so I'm gonna bring the plant in before I drop this. So here you have my silver sword, also known as the philodendron hestatum. I don't even know if it's gonna be all in frame. All right, I'm giving, getting the thumbs up. So here is my pride and joy and my happy, healthy silver sword. Now I'm just gonna kind of give you a tour of the plant. Here at the bottom, you can see that the leaves are quite damaged. So these are the leaves that came with the plant when I bought it. You see that there's browning in the middle. You see browning on the sides. It almost looks like it's cut. This one as well came with the leaf. As you see there, a bit of damage. Again, that was all there when I bought it. So right away you see that the plant just wasn't in good condition, right? So it definitely was the reason as to why I was very hesitant. So here you have a leaf that is a lot more mature than the, uh, the first three leaves. You see the lobes that um, are bigger. And then this leaf does not have one of the lobes. So this one was probably one of the more damaged ones, but it was one of the bigger ones. So after that, the rest of the plant grew while it was with me. And like I said, it's basically one leaf a month right now. So in my care, the plant has put out three leaves. This one was put out at the end of March and I was super happy with it. There was a little bit of damage or again, just the process of it transitioning to my care the roots and stuff like that. So I was just blessed that it did come out as a nice leaf considering the roots that I had to work with. And then this leaf came in about a month later. I'll put the exact date on the screen. So this one came in exactly um, at the end of May, I believe, but it came out beautifully. Oh no, I lied, this one. <laughs> this one was the next leaf that came out and it's just a gorgeous leaf as you see So so beautiful the lobes are so defined and it's such a big leaf like it's longer than my hand so definitely this plant has come a long way 
and just recently this leaf actually just unfurled and it's now June. Um, I also did post it on my story on Instagram. Shameless plug if you want to <laughs> follow me on Instagram. Just I was super happy that this plant is just thriving and loving life right now. And then that is the leaf that just unfurled like I said. I believe it was yesterday or the day before. Very, very happy. And like I said, it is on a little bamboo stick and it's already outgrown the stick. So I will have to definitely replace it with something else. I just have it strapped with some green tape, Velcro tape and it's helping the plant stay up. And as you see, it is in a, in a pot that's quite small, I would say, but because it started with such a small root system, right? So I had to really be mindful of not over watering the plant because it has struggled through root rot. So I will try not to tip the plants, but hopefully you can see that there is a space in between the top of the pot and the soil. So there you have it, my beautiful silver sword, and I definitely show her off on Instagram, but she has come a long way, and I'm just grateful that I was able to save her <laughs> and be able to share this with you. So I almost forgot to also show you this little guy. I forgot to mention that the mother plant did have a baby attached to it, uh, right at the bottom you may have noticed in one of the previous pictures but I did end up separating him and now he is his own plant he is thriving in this propagation box or just a container in order to increase the humidity for some of the plants like I did with the mother plant and yeah so I have a little silver sword uh, so I was able to get two plants out of that purchase and they are both healthy so here he is with his friend. <laughs> now, a few other things that I may have missed on saying earlier that I was just thinking of now is I was just disinfecting the roots with some dish soap. So just water and dish soap. I really just went for it and cleaned it all up. And like I said, I just removed all of the rotting roots because at that point I just had to do what I had to do. It was very stressful, very nerve wracking because like I mentioned, the roots were just such a small system for the plant. So I just felt that it wasn't going to be able to sustain the plant at that point, but plants are just resilient. I'm telling you, like I always feel like plants are just so resilient as long as you give them a fair chance, let, give them a little bit of help and they will be just fine. Other than that, I think that's the only piece that I wanted to add to the beginning, but uh, throughout the video, I will be putting the timestamps and some videos and pictures to hopefully help you see how long the process was. So in total, I think it's four months. Uh, someone commented on the other video of my Rifidophora tetrasperma rehab and rescue that they would uh, suggest or recommend if I could provide timestamps and timelines just so that people that are newer in the houseplant collection, a hobbyist community, that ultimately you do have to have patience with some of this stuff. It doesn't happen in just a few weeks. It could take months to see a plant recover. So hopefully this just provides you a little bit more reassurance assurance that there's a little bit more patience and the plant can definitely surprise you. But other than that, folks, thank you so much for sticking around and I have a few things that I'm going to be doing in the next few weeks and I'll definitely take you along on this journey and I will see you soon. Mm -hmm.